next up, we're going to bring on our first demo for the day. We're going to bring on Georgius from Paradigm to tell you all about RET and everything you can do in the world of Rust and Foundry. So I'll give him a second to set up, but please give Georgius a big round of applause. Just, just wanted to make sure that so thank you all for coming. Um, on the left side of the screen, we're seeing a RET node running right now in production on mainnet alongside a lighthouse node tracking the tip by running foundry cast block number on every block. You can see that either scan on the right is uh, our first internet is not going to work. Oh, OK. So block 98, block 97. I will refresh 98. And we can keep doing that. And you will see that it tracks the tip just fine. So it's working. And it's been a lot of work. And uh, it's unbelievable, honestly, that it's working. So let's get into things. So we're building a new execution layer for Ethereum. Um, in this talk, we're going to go over the motivation, the what, the when, the what's next, and a lot more. First things first, you know, we don't uh, hold anyone to how they should pronounce it. Pronounce it however you want. I call it wreath. Others call it wreath. Like one of my colleagues said that I would kill him if I, uh, I, if I heard him call it wreath or something. You know, call it whatever you want. I don't care. Motivation, what, when. The SDK, I don't know if we'll be able to get into it because we have limited time and uh, I want to respect the next speakers and uh, the future. So. Um, the Ethereum protocol over time is changing. There's a lot more cryptography being bundled into it. There's a lot more systems networking. You can see that this is Vitalik's um, roadmap from a while ago. But you get the idea. Ethereum is becoming a big complex system that um, we need to understand and we need to be very principled about. Ethereum also requires client diversity. It requires um, a healthy set of participants in both the consensus and both the execution layer, such that if a critical issue happens, the network does not finalize a conflicting checkpoint. If it happened, it would be catastrophic, and it would be like not here next year. And we'd like to avoid that. Um, an Ethereum client is a piece of software that um, is a piece of software that usually you would expect that you can run it as a node, but it also is used in various other applications. Examples include indexers, block explorers, layer twos, MEV infrastructure, and so much more. But the reality is that the clients are always remixed. I think the internet is a bit slow or things aren't loading, by the way. Um, or I don't know why. Um, anyway, um, I'll just keep going. Um, becoming a core developer is hard. Um, it requires a lot of mental overhead. It requires learning a lot of things about an entire system. It has a lot of edge cases. It has legacy code, which again, no shade on the people. We've been building this, this system for like five, six, seven years. Obviously, there will be legacy code. And obviously, the abstractions are not going to be clean from the get-go. And that's why people re-implement stuff. And the only thing I know how to do well is to re-implement. So we went back to the drawing board, and we're like, OK, let's do something. And also, here's some more data points on the motivation. Performance is all we do at Paradigm and in our open source teams. Some people here use Foundry. Some don't. Again, we will not hold any, any grudges. Um, but performance in the whole ecosystem is kind of embarrassing, and we need to do better. So we went to the drawing board, and we thought, OK, why don't we build a node? How crazy can we get? How hard could it be? You know, let's build bigger, harder things. And we also took it from the foundry angle, which we saw that worked and got loved so much, which was build things that are like for the ecosystem, for people to build, for people to have like a tight feedback loop to be able to chat about it and feel like we're like building something together. And also, we want to give back to Ethereum. You know, it's given me a job. It's given everyone here a job. Like, we got to do something for it, you know? And uh, I strongly relate to that, like, very, very much so. So we built a node. Red is an Apache MIT licensed execution layer. It's an archive node with best-in-class performance characteristic, which we'll get to in a second. 
And uh, the main thing I wanted to talk about in this slide is the culture of the team, because the culture is what makes its way into the code. And um, the process that we use for developing our software is inclusive. Mentorship first. Um, no task is small enough to be broken down into smaller pieces for a lower level contributor to take it on. We pick up people from like their like pre-Rust journey, like I will like abuse them until they start learning Rust. And then afterwards they will get in our repositories, they will open an issue, a pull request, like our team will come in and like mentor. It's a beautiful thing. We have a very high bar, um, but we expect that people that will put in the work and that they will be rewarded. People get hired from our code bases and our chat rooms, and not by paradigm only, although we do try to hire the best talent out of our code base and out of our repositories, but like even competitors, and that's okay. The pie is big enough. The thing that we do a lot is that we're like feedback first. Um, there's no room for egos. There's no room for, you know, your product is not good. Oh, I'm feeling bad. You know, you have to tell us the way it is. Um, because if you don't tell us the way it is, like, who is going to tell it to us the way it is? You know, we're going to be screwed if we don't have customer feedback. So if anything sucks, please come find us, like, swear at us, throw tomatoes at us, I don't know, but, like, get an issue open after you do all of that. And we also don't do calls as much as we can. We do some, the bare minimum, but we try to keep it async first. We try to keep it written, precise, and no time wasted. Like, we work around the clock, we work across main time zones, we're not gonna spend time on like taking up locks on people's calendars. I have an IP address here, which is the address that you saw running the node in the beginning. Feel free to connect to it, hit it as hard as you can, you know, we'll see what happens. There's a Grafana board that you can use. Um, all of these are running on the Alpha 4 release, which came out last Monday. Um, and um, just to do a quick summary of the so what, Paradigm funded the core team of eight, including me. We built it since October, I believe. The repository has over 100 open source contributors in this time. Foundry at this point has like 250-ish, I think. It has an incredible performance, which I'll talk about in a second. It's feature complete up to Shanghai, and we're starting Cancun very soon. Look how to be ready for DevNets by end of August, maybe early September. It has most of Ethereum GS and RPC, and has the two very powerful tracing APIs that people want to use for node infrastructure, for tracing, for MEV, and whatnot. And the last part is I take a set of libraries, which I don't think I'll have to talk time, time to talk about, unfortunately. Um, yeah, yikes. Contributors 135 as of yesterday, 2K stars, and uh, 380, uh, 359 pull requests in the last 30 days with eight people. How does this happen? You tell me. Like, we have a big open source community of people that want to be working with us, and we work with them. So if you're a Rust developer, work with us, and we will do the best, our best, to make this happen proper. Um, okay, uh, we'll work with it. It's enough, I think. Um, this chart is a latency chart, so lower is better. Um, this is latency for ETH call on REF, and it's unfortunate that we're not able to see, but the lower, it outperforms like 10x plus or more, like in some cases 100 um, compared to other RPC nodes. Um, we're still making that better. I acknowledge that uh, we're not able to do that already for every RPC call. There's no reason why we won't be able to do it now. So we want to get better at that. Throughput, um, when you have a system that is able to saturate its load fully, the chart that you would expect to see is a Y equals X chart, a linear one that says request in, request out. The node that we're comparing ourselves to around like the 8,000 requests per second, um, it starts to break down. On the top of the screen, we can see the time and the database size, the time to sync an archive node from Genesis on bare metal hardware on RAID 0 and VME disks, on two disks that are RAID 0 together at block 17.4 million, which is around as of a month ago. Red outperforms anything in the market significantly, um, and it's something that we're extremely proud about. And we have more work to do on it, like we're not done. 
The database size, um, we leverage the Ergon design, which means that we're the same rough ballpark um, with some small content improvements, like I don't think the 300 gigabytes matter here. You're over two terabytes, the next one is four terabytes, the next one is eight, and so on, so it's kind of like the same thing. But for Geth and Nethermind, for example, for archive node, again, um, it's, it's not uh, tractable, right? Ah, how did this load and the previous one didn't? Okay, nice. We built the, the, the two charts that you saw earlier, these ones. Um, we've created with this tool. Uh, this is a load testing tool that we built specifically for Red, and now we maintain to develop high performance, high quality data-driven benchmarks for um, RPC nodes. I think the Ethereum ecosystem is a bit embarrassingly non-scientific, honestly, and here we're trying to take a bit of a scientific approach with like very clear measurements at the J-curve inflection point of the throughput latency graph. Buzzwords, but you know, if uh, you care about performance, like you understand what I mean. There's no secret. Um, we do profiling, we use flame graphs, we try to close every feedback loop. We are not like geniuses. What we do is that we know where to measure. You know, as an engineer, you look at a wide flame graph that is very red, and you keep staring at it until you figure out how to make it less wide, less red. Repeat, the code will become fast. It's not rocket science. We also use the Ergon architecture, which as I said, is a breakthrough innovation, and big shout out to the team. We use Revm, which is an EVM um, built in Rust to be high performance. It's the same EVM that Foundry uses. And of course, we use the Rust programming language for its performance and safety guarantees. One underrated thing about the Rust programming language is that it's inclusive, and inclusivity makes its way into the code after you have started like programming for a few weeks. Yes, it does have a slightly higher bar to entry, but once you're past that, you can onboard to any code base, the most advanced code bases um, in days, not weeks, not months, certainly. I don't have time to get into this defense in depth approach. We know how to do security. I was an auditor in my earlier days. Um, we work with the best security people on the planet. Like, we know how to do security. We hope to do this better. We want to audit it. We don't have the capacity to run a full-on fledged audit, so please don't do sales to me. Um, if you want to audit it and you want to put it on your like client list, it's free, open source. We're happy to work with you. Like, we're not going to be able to like do something big here, unfortunately. Well, we hope that the ecosystem is excited to keep this secured, hopefully. The action items <coughs> for the group is run a node. I'm not able to run a thousand nodes um, because I don't have a thousand different pieces of hardware. Um, the main thing that we need to understand how good the node is, is how well, how much is the variance of performance across different hardware types. And as you see at the bottom, like the disk is king, and we have a GitHub gist here, um, which explains various performance characteristics of disks and their time to sync, their IOPS, and so on. So we want more work on that. We will support every platform that we can, and if you want to run a node, um, don't come meet me after, but please go the, join the Telegram room, and we will happily handhold you. I will personally handhold you online if I need to. Um, if I have time, do we have some time? No, okay, thank you.